Hi there, my name is Andrea and this is High Literature where I introduce books and stories to you, the viewer. Um, today we're going to do something a little different. Instead of talking about books, we're going to talk about comic books. Um, I love comic books. I grew up with them. My family opened a shop back in the late 80s and they've just always been a part of my life. And there was one uh, comic in particular, actually I guess it's a graphic novel, that came out, I want to say I was seven or so, and as soon as I saw the cover, I just wanted to read it so bad. It looked so cool, but I couldn't because it was sealed, so I wasn't able to just read it without tearing it open, and that was not something my parents were going to let me do, so I never read it, and today I'm finally going to get to see what this is. It is a Frank Miller story called Electra Lives Again, and this came out, huh, I guess you're going to find out when I open it up, because this is still sealed too. I'm so excited. I've waited almost my whole life to read this, and uh, it just, I, I cheated a little and read a little bit about it on the internet, but other than that, I, I, don't, I don't know anything of what it's about, just that it's a Frank Miller story and apparently from what I gathered online, not one that he talks about a lot for, I guess, some kind of falling out he had with Marvel regarding the character. Um, so I guess there was some drama there and as such, this isn't a story he talks about a lot, but uh, yeah, I love Frank Miller. Um, I've read like some of his other works. Like this is um, a copy that was given to retailers only. So since we had the shop, we got one and it's a Sin City, The Hard Goodbye. And it's in this really nice leather bound uh, edition with this nice gold foil here on the cover. And I would not recommend this for younger readers. It is very salty, um, maybe for high school and up, but elementary and middle school, not so much. Um, the other stuff that he did that he's really well known for are his Batman stories. He did, uh, let's see here, this is The Dark Knight Returns and The Dark Knight Strikes Again. And these are awesome. Uh, this is the 30th anniversary edition and the introductions by Frank Miller himself and Brian Azareo. Uh, I started reading him when he did the 100 Bullets comic series, I think with Vertigo, which is like the adult version of DC. Really good series. Um, and yeah, now I have this guy. So we're going to open it together start here with this little blister hole. Oh my god, it's finally happening. I cut my fingernails, so this is proving to be a bit more difficult than I thought. Oh, do I have to get a tool? I can't just use my finger. There we go. Come on. Yeah. Smells like straight up ink. Nineteen ninety. So yeah, I was seven. The store was open for two years. Oh my god, this looks so cool. Wow. Really? Script and line art by Frank Miller. The color art is by Lynn Varley, which you see here. Where did we go? Yeah, Miller and Varley. So Varley did the coloring. 
The letters are by Jim Novak. Titles by Steve Miller. Interesting. Electra created by Frank Miller. Yeah, he created this character and had some kind of deal with Marvel. Sorry, this focus is going out. There we go. Uh, to never use the character again after he finished it with this Daredevil line he was doing. And I guess it was some kind of contract that they had regarding the character that Marvel broke. And it made Frank Miller really, really mad. I don't know. Let's see. I guess, oh man, this isn't going to work. No. Well, let me tell you, this looks beautiful. I don't know how well you can see, but just to get an idea, I mean, how cool does that look? This is definitely worth the wait. I revisited the Sin City book recently, and it's cool seeing this in color after seeing all the black and white art in Sin City. Daredevil and Electra weren't stories that I ever read in the store. It just didn't catch my interest. So this is going to be the first time I've ever read a Daredevil or Electra story either. Lots of firsts with this. Man, this looks so good. reminds me of the Ninja Turtles. Like there's art with this right here. I guess he's training and just the way the art looks really reminds me of, let's see if I can find it. Where are you turtles? Hmm. Ooh, it's way back there. Yeah, I'm not moving all that. But Yes, very reminiscent of Eastman and Laird. Ah, oh, that looks so cool. That's a nice full page shot right there of Electra. Looks like she's about to rain some death down on some people. This is gonna be so fun to read. Oh my God, look at that detail. That's so cool. I wonder how big these, these were. I remember thinking that, you know, the art that you saw was how it was made. And then I found out later, reading like the back end pages of different issues of different comics. I think it was a Kabuki comic by David Mack. And there was a photograph of him working on um, one of the pages in the comic book. And it was like the size of a table. It was huge and he would make these giant paintings and then the publishing company you know they would shrink it down to a comic book size and i just thought i mean that was like that blew my mind when i saw that and so now i'm seeing this stuff and i'm just wondering like how big were these like were they the size of a table were they this size i don't know so this is gonna be really fun to read I can't wait. And it smells so good. Ah, oh, man, it's been a long time since I've got to open something that was still sealed like that. So I'm gonna sit and read this, and um, after I'm finished, I'll 
come back and make another video and talk about what the story is and dive into a little more of like the history of the character and how Frank Miller came to create Electra and all that good stuff. So yeah, if you're into comic books, please come back and we'll talk about this some more. Thanks. Bye.